What is the church to do? What causes change? Where do we go? Do we hang up our shingle outside the house and say, well, there's nothing more we can do? We gave it our best shot? No. By no means. By no means do we sit back and let society continue to degrade the definition of marriage, to de degrade the definition of family. There is one truth, and that is that when we became self-centered, when we became focused on ourselves, me-centric, we stopped being God-centric, Christ-centered. We stopped making Him the most important thing in our lives. The breakdown of our families is caused by the breakdown of our relationship with our one true God, our Heavenly Father. The breakdown of our families is a direct result, and it's not easy to hear. It's not easy to hear because our society keeps saying, well, it's freedom of dot, 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 whatever you happen to think it is. But that's not what God's Word says. God gives us His commands. God gives us right and wrong. He defines those. And He gave those to us for a reason. He gave those to us so that we would know who He was. So that we would know what He intended for our life. Believe it or not, God didn't just give us these commands arbitrarily. He didn't just give us His law just because. He gave it to us because He knew that we, like children, would need discipline. An undisciplined child is not really a happy child. An undisciplined child, oftentimes, it may seem at the time like it's easier like they're happier. But eventually, you discover that you can't just have everything you want. And when God gave us His law, when God gave us these, this discipline, He gave it to us to help us, to guide us, and to direct us. We as a church cannot just sit by and let society continue to degrade the family. We as a church can't sit here with our doors closed and hope that things turn around. How long, how well has that worked? It hasn't worked very well. This me-centric attitude has just continued to get worse, not better. It starts by changing one person at a time. We can't change a whole generation. But in our own families, in our own lives, we can make God the most important thing. We can make God the center. There's an old adage that's become somewhat cliche, but I still think it's very applicable. And that is families that pray together stay together. Like I said, it's become somewhat cliche, but it is so true. When we turn from putting things on ourselves, putting the prior making ourselves a priority, and make God the priority, when we take time to pray to God, when we take time to worship God together, it is amazing the way He works in our lives. It is amazing the difference He makes. It's amazing the way He turns around that which is terrible, that which is broken, and repairs it. Christ has come today with healing. He's come today with mercy to restore the brokenhearted, to restore the broken relationships in our lives. He has come to save us. And that is the message the world needs to hear. That is the message that, has been, that we've been forced to keep to ourselves. That the, that the media forces us to keep quiet. But no more. No more can we keep this and let the, let the world continue to go out of control. No more can we support these self-centered attitudes. Now there's a danger. There's certainly a danger in standing, for, standing up for what is right. Certainly the danger of those not liking you. And we saw that when Jesus stood up for what was right when He came, that He certainly was not liked and it ended in death. But there's a further danger. And that's the danger of allowing ourselves to become me-centric, self-centered even in that time when we are correcting others, when we are helping others to a right relationship. There's a, you probably have heard of him, Reverend Fred Phelps, pastor of Westboro Baptist Church. He became popular by preaching messages at homosexual rallies. And, he, and also more recently, he became popular 
by protesting at military funerals. Now, I'm sure at first, Reverend Phelps' intentions were good. At least, Eighth Commandment looking at it, that hopefully that his intent was good. But he's t- turned the message to a me-centric message. He's turned the message to one of hate. Instead of one of ha- hating the sin and loving the sinner, he's turned the message to hating the sinner. He has said, said things, written things on signs that are so derogatory that they should not be repeated in church. And he stands up as a minister of God and preaches these messages. The thing is, God does hate sin. God hates sin because He is righteous and He is holy. But He does not hate His creation. We are each His creation. And in fact, He loves His creation. He loves each one of us. No matter how many sins we commit, no matter how many times we break His law, He doesn't hate us. He loves us. He loves us so much that He sent His Son into the world to redeem this creation. To redeem this broken, fallen creation. He sent His one and only Son into the world to die on the cross and to give His life as a sacrifice. He sent His Son to restore the broken family of the church. And when Christ did die on the cross, when He shed His blood for each one of us, He brought us forgiveness. He brought us restoration. Certainly around us we see families that are falling apart, maybe even in our own families. But never underestimate the power of God. Because even in the midst of these broken relationships in our broken families, Christ's power is still alive and well. Christ's power is still there. God gave us families to love, to sustain, and to support one another. He gave us families to care for one another. He gave us families for the mutual upbuilding of His gospel among us. Where two or three are gathered in His name, there He is. Ruth set a stunning example by honoring her mother-in-law in a way that was completely unnecessary, but perfectly, but perfectly living up to that, well, at least as we have shared in Scripture, perfectly living up to God's command in Exodus 20, honor your father and your mother. And as we live each day, as we live each day of our lives in this world, Things will be difficult. Things will be hard. Sometimes parents will be angry at children. Sometimes children will be angry at parents. And the relationships will fall apart. But in those times, we again need to turn to Jesus, the true strength, the Almighty One. When Naomi and Ruth made the trip from Moab to Bethlehem, Naomi changed her name. She changed her name to Mara. And again, if you're not familiar with your biblical terminology, Mara means bitterness because of the terrible things that had happened in her life. The loss of her two sons, the loss of her husband. But by the end of the book, she saw the provision of God. She saw the plan of God take place. And her name was Naomi, my delight. And indeed, the Lord delights in His children. Indeed, the Lord delights in each one of us. So regardless, regardless of how far the world has gone from God's Word, as a church, we need to be a beacon on the rock. We need to be a place where God's Word is still preached purely and truly. We need to be a place where a sinner can come and not hear a message of hate, but can hear the message, I forgive you. Because Jesus indeed forgives each and every one of us. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we pray for Your forgiveness. We pray for Your forgiveness in our lives for when we have broken Your laws, when we have failed to carry out Your commands, Lord, we pray for your forgiveness when our family relationships have fallen apart. And Lord, we pray that you would repair those relationships. 
that you would bind us together, that you would restore us. Lord, we pray that through your Son, Jesus, that we would find the greatest strength of all, that we would find your love, because it is by the power of your love that you have redeemed each one of us. Lord, may we go forth, never fearing your word, but always trusting it, knowing that you may hate our sin, but you have never stopped loving us. And the greatest act of all that we have seen is you sending your son Jesus. And it is in his name we pray. Amen.